Assalamu alaikum dear students, I am your instructor, facilitator and mentor, Dr. Aisha Mahmood and I welcome you all to the online course, Introduction to Information Technology. This is your lesson 2 of week 11 and to understand uh, in depth the concept of uh, digital security, ethics and privacy, you need to read the chapter 5 of your main textbook that is discovering computers. After completing this lesson, you would be able to identify the safeguards against hardware theft, vandalism and failure. Explain options available for backing up, identify risks and safeguards associated with wireless communications. Recognize issues issues related to information accuracy, intellectual property rights, codes of conduct and green computing. Discuss issues surrounding information privacy including electronic profiles, cookies, phishing, spyware and adware. Social engineering, privacy laws, employee mon monitoring and content filtering. Users rely on computers and mobile devices to create, store and manage important information as discussed earlier. You should take measures to protect computers and devices from theft, vandalism and failure. So hardware theft is the act of stealing digital equipment, whereas the hardware vandalism involves defacing or destroying digital equipment. Hardware can fail for a variety of reasons, aging hardware, natural or man-made disasters or random events such as electric power failures and even errors in the programs or applications. This slide summarizes the techniques you can use to safeguard a hardware from theft, vandalism and failure. So hardware theft and vandalism safeguards can be the physical access control by keeping your doors and windows locked, by using alarm systems, by physically uh, uh, using security devices like cables and locks and then uh, device tracking application can also be used to track the hardware uh, theft and vandalism. Then comes the hardware failure safeguards that can be achieved by search by using search protectors, uh, uninterrupted power supply, duplicate components or duplicate computers and fault tolerant computers. To protect against data loss caused by hardware and software or information theft or system failure, users should back up computer and mobile device files regularly. As previously described, a backup is a duplicate of a file program or media that can be used if the original is lost or damaged or destroyed. And to back up a file means to make a copy of it. In the case of system failure or the discovery of the corrupted files, you restore the file by copying the backed up files to their original location on the computer or mobile device. If you choose to back up locally, be sure to use high quality media. A good choice for a home user might be optical disks or an external hard drive. Keep your backup media in a fireproof or heat proof or uh, you can also keep it in a wallet or uh, off-site. Uh, what does this off-site mean? So off-site means in a location that is separate from where you typically store or use your computer or mobile device. Keeping backup copies off-site minimizes the chance that a single disaster such as a fire would destroy both the original and the backup media. An off-site location can be a safe deposit box at a bank, a briefcase or cloud storage or cloud backup.
business and home users can perform four types of backup full differential incremental or selective a fifth type continuous data protection often is used only by large enterprises to backup data to an in-house network storage device purchased and maintained by that enterprise cloud backup services a sixth option are provided providing continuous data protection capabilities at a lower cost some users implement a three generation backup policy to preserve three copies of important files the grandparent is the oldest copy of the file the parent is the second oldest copy of the file and the child is the most recent copy of the file when a new backup is performed the child becomes the parent and the parent becomes the grandparent and the media on which the grand parent copy was stored by uh, may be erased or reused for a future backup the table in front summarizes the purpose advantages and disadvantages of each of these backup methods first of all we'll discuss about the full backup full backup it copies all the files on media in the computer it is the fastest recovery method all the files are saved and it provides longest backup time whereas the differential backup copies only the files that have changed since the last full backup it is the fast backup method requires minimal storage space to backup recovery is time consuming because the last full backup plus the differential backup are needed then comes the incremental backup it copies only the files that have changed since the last full or incremental backup it is fastest backup method it requires minimal storage space to backup only most recent changes saved um recovery is uh, most time consuming because the last full backup and all the incremental backup since the last full backup are needed then comes the selective backup users choose which files or folders to include in a backup it is fast backup method again it provides great flexibility it is difficult to manage individual file backups it is least manageable of all the backup methods then comes the continuous data protection all data is backed up whenever a change is made the only real time backup very fast recovery of data very expensive and requires a great amount of storage then comes the cloud backup uh, files are backed up to the cloud as they change cloud backup provide uh, providers maintains backup hardware files may be retrieved from anywhere with the internet connection on any device requires an internet connection otherwise files are marked for backup when the computer goes back online billions of home and business users have laptops smartphones and other mobile devices to access the internet send email and internet messages chat online and share network connections all wirelessly home users set up wireless home networks mobile users access wireless networks in hotspots at airports hotels shopping malls uh, bookstores restaurants and coffee shops schools have wireless networks so that students can access the school network using their mobile computers and devices as they move from building to building although wireless access provides many conveniences to users it also poses additional security risks some perpetrators connect to their uh, wireless networks to gain free internet access others may try to access an organization's confidential data to access a wireless network the individual must be in range of the wireless network some intruders intercept and monitor communications as they transmit through the air other 
router connects to a network through an unsecured wireless access point that is called WAP or com combination router with WAP. As with any powerful technology, computers and mobile devices can be used for both good and bad intentions. The standards that determine whether an action is good or bad are known as ethics. Technology ethics are the moral guidelines that govern the use of computers, mobile devices, information systems and related technologies. Frequently discussed area of computer ethics are unauthorized use of the computers, mobile devices and networks. Software theft, which means piracy, information accuracy, intellectual property rights, codes of conduct, green computing and information privacy. Previous sections in this chapter discussed unauthorized use of computers, mobile devices and networks and softwares, software theft, that is piracy. The following section discuss issues related to information accuracy, intellectual property rights, codes of ethics, green computing and information piracy. Sorry, information privacy. Technology ethics are the moral guidelines that govern the use of computers, mobile devices, information systems and related technologies. Information accuracy is a concern today because eh, many users access information maintained by other people or other companies, such as on the internet. Do not assume that because the information is on the web, that is always correct. Users should evaluate the value of a web page before relying on its content. Be aware that the organization providing access to the information may not be the creator of that information. In addition to the concerns about the accuracy of computer input, some individuals and organizations raise questions about the ethics of using computers to alter output, primarily graphic output such as a retouched photo with the graphics equipment and software users easily can digitize photos and then add change, add or change or remove images. This digitally edited photo shows a fruit that looks like an apple on the outside and an orange on the inside. Intellectual property refers to unique and original works such as ideas, inventions, art, writings, process, processes, company and product names and the logos. Intellectual property rights are the rights to which creators are entitled for their work. Certain issues arise surrounding IP, which is intellectual property today because many of these works are available digitally and easily can be redistributed or altered without the creator's permission. A copyright gives author, artist and other creators of original work exclusive right to duplicate, publish and sell their materials. A copyright protects any tangible form of expression. Then comes the cop, uh, common uh, infringement of the copyright is that is called piracy, where people illegally copy software, movies and music. Many areas are not clear cut with respect to the law because copyright law gives the public fear use of use to copyrighted material the issue surrounds the phrase fair use which allows user for educational and critical purposes the issue with the copyright law led to the development of digital rights management which is D, uh, drm it is a strategy designed to prevent illegal distribution of the movies music and other digital content Code of conduct is a written guideline that helps determine whether a specification is ethical or unethical or allowed or unallowed. So an IT code of conduct focuses uh, on acceptable use of technology. Employers and schools often specify standards for the ethical use of technology in an IT code of conduct and this then distribute 
these standards to the employees and students. So a sample IT code of conduct is in front of you where you can see there are 10 points in which uh, it is written that technology may not be used uh, to harm uh, other people, employees may not be uh, meddle in others, uh, others' files. Uh, employees may use technology only for purposes in which they have been authorized. Technology may not be used to steal. Technology may not be used to bear false witness and so on. So this is a sample IT code of conduct. People use and often waste resources such as electricity and paper while using technology. Recall chapter number one that green computing involves reducing the electricity and environmental waste while using computers, mobile devices and related technologies. So there are some of the green computing tips in front of you. For example, you need to con uh, conserve the energy. How? By using computers and devices that comply with the Energy Star program. So it, this is called this energy saving program. Do not leave a computer device running overnight. Turn off the monitor, printer and other devices when not in use. Then you can also reduce the environmental waste by using paperless method to communicate. Recycle paper and buy recycled paper. Uh, recycling the toner and ink cartridges, computers, mobile devices, printers and other devices. And by telecommuting, telecommuting and by using video conferencing and voice over internet protocol for meetings. Information privacy refers to the right of individuals and companies to deny or restrict the collection, use and dissemination of information about them. Organizations often use huge databases to store records, such as employees' records, medical records, final rec financial records, and more. Much of the data is personal and confidential and should be accessible only to the authorized users. Many individuals and organizations, however, question whether this data is uh, really is private. That is, some companies and individuals collect and use the, this information without your authorization. So websites often collect data about you so that you can uh, whatever they basically uh, uh, they basically use it for advertisement. So they can uh, use this data to customize their advertisement and send you the personalized email messages. Some employers monitor your computer usage and email messages. This figure in front of you that lists measures you can take to make your personal data more private. So let me just read some of them for you. For example, fill in only necessary information on rebate, warranty and registration forms. Do not pre-print your phone number or social security number on personal checks and so on. So by reading all that you can uh, safeguard your personal information on the internet. This slide address techniques com uh, companies and employees use to collect your personal data. For example, they can use your uh, uh, electronic profiles. When you fill out a printed form such as magazine subscription or contest entry or any, an online form to sign up for a service, create a profile on an online social network or register a product warranty, the merchant that receives the form usually stores the information you provide in a database. Likewise, every time you tap or click an advertisement, um, the um, on uh, advertisement on the web or perform a search online, your information and preferences enter a database. Some merchants may sell or share the content of the database with national marketing firms and internet advertise, advertising firms. By combining this data with information for, from public records such as driver's license, uh, vehicle registrations, these firms can create an electronic profile of individuals. Electronic profiles may include personal details such as your age, your address, phone number, 
um, uh, marital status, numbers and ages of the dependents, interests and spending habits. Direct marketing supporters claim that using information in this way lowers overall selling costs, which lowers product prices. Uh, criti critiques uh, contend that the information in electronic profile reveals more about an individual than anyone has a right to know. They argue that the companies should inform people if they plan to provide personal information to others and people should have the right to deny such use. Many websites allow people to specify, specify whether they want their personal information shared or preferences retained. So you need to be very careful in using your uh, online data entry uh, at uh, different points. A cookie is a small text file that a web server stores on your computer. Cookie file typically contain data about you such as your username, postal code and viewing preferences. Websites use cookies for a variety of purpose. So I, I'll just mention some of them. Uh, for example, most websites that allow for a personalization use cookies to track user preferences. These cookies may obtain their values when a user fills in an online form requesting personal information. Some, web, some website, for example, store use user in names in cookies in order to display a personalized greeting that welcomes the user by name back to the website. Other websites allow users to customize their viewing experience with preferences such as local news, headlines, um, the local weather forecast or stock quotes. Then comes some uh, websites use cookies to store usernames and passwords as well. So the users do not need to enter their information every time they sign into the website. Uh, the third one is the online shopping sites generally use a session cookie to keep track of items in a user's shopping cart. This way users can start an order during, an, during a one web uh, session and finish it on another day in another session. So session cookies usually expire for after a certain period of time such as a week or a month. Some websites um, use cookies to track how often users visit a site and websites uh, they visit while at the uh, while, while at their website. Some websites may also use cookies to target advertisements. These websites store a user's interest and browsing habits in the cookie. So many commercial websites send a cookie to your browser, your computer's hardware derived then store, stores that cookie. The next time you visit the website, your browser retrieves the cookie from your hard drive and sends the data in the cookie to the website. This slide will illustrate how websites work with cookies. A website can read data only from uh, its own cookie file stored on your hard drive. That is, it cannot access or view any other data on your hard drive, including other cookie file. So how cookies work? As a first step, when you enter the address of a website in a browser, the browser searches your hard drive for a cookie associated with the website. As step number two, if the browser sends a cookie, it sends information in the cookie file to the website. Step number three, if the website does not receive cookie information and is expecting it, the website creates an identification number for you in its database and sends that number to your browser. The browser in turn creates a cookie file based on that number and stores that cookie file on your hard drive. The website now can update information in the cookie file whenever you access that website. Phishing is a scam in which a perpetrator sends an official looking email message that attempts to obtain your personal uh, or financial information. These messages look legitimate and request that you update your credit card numbers, your social security numbers, bank account numbers, passports or other private information. 
So click jacking is yet another similar scam. With click jacking, an object that can be tapped or clicked such as a button, image or link on a website, pop up ad or pop under ad or in any email message or text contains a malicious program. When a user taps or clicks the uh, disguised object, a variety of nefarious events may occur. For example, the user may be redirected to a phony website that requests personal information or a virus may download to the computer or mobile device. Browsers typically include clickjacking protections. Spyware is a program placed on a computer or mobile device without the user knowledge that uh, secretly collects information about the user and then communicates the information it collects to some outside source while the user is online. Some vendors or employers use spyware to collect information about program usage or, or employees. Internet advertising firms often collect information about users' web browsing habits. Spyware can enter your computer when you install a new program through malware or through a graphic on a website or in an email message. Whereas an adware is a program that displays an online advertisement in a banner, a pop-up window or a pop under window on a web page, email message or other internet services. Adware on mobile phones is known as madware. Uh, for mobile adware, sometimes spyware is hidden in adware. So to remove the spyware and Adware, you can obtain spyware removers, adware removers or malware removers that can detect and delete the spyware and adware. Some operating systems and browsers include spyware and adware removers. As related to the use of technology, Social engineering is defined as the gain, gain, gaining unauthorized access to or obtaining confidential information by taking advantage of the trusted human nature of some victims and the naivety of others. Some social engineers trick their victims into revealing uh, confidential information such as their usernames and passwords on the, on the phone or in person or on the internet. Techniques they use um, include pretending to be an administrator or other engineers also obtain information from users who do not destroy or conceal information properly. Uh, these uh, perpetrators uh, sift through company dumpsters, watch or film people dialing phone numbers or using ATMs and snoop around computers or mobile devices looking for openly displayed confidential information. So how to protect from social engineering scams? You need to follow uh, these tips. Uh, you can verify the identity of any person or organization requesting personal or confidential information. When uh, relaying uh, personal or confidential information, ensure that only authorized people can hear your conversation. When personal or confidential information appears on a computer or mobile device, ensure that only Authorized people can see your screen. Shred all sensitive or confidential documents while wasting those documents. The concern about privacy has led to the enactment of federal and state laws regarding the storage and disclosure of personal data. So you can just go through uh, table number 5.3 on page 246 uh, for a listing of major US government laws concerning privacy. Employee monitoring involves the use of computers, mobile devices, or cameras to observe, record, and review an employee's use of a technology, including the communications such as email messages, keyboard activities, um, website visited. Many programs exist uh, that easily allow employers to monitor their employees. Further, further, it is illegal for employers to use these programs. One 
one of the more contro controversial issues that surround the internet is its widespread availability of objectionable material such as prejudice um, literature violence and absence of photos some believe such uh, material should be banned others believe that the material should be filtered that is restricted so a content filtering is often used what is content filtering it is the process of restricting the access to certain material many businesses use content filtering to limit employees web access these business argue that employees are unproductive when visiting inappropriate or objectionable websites some schools libraries and parents use content filtering to restrict access to the minors content filtering uh, opponents argue that the banning may uh, uh, banning any material violates constitutional guarantees of the free speech and personal rights so you can uh, read further about it in your book and uh, then comes the web filtering software it's a program that restricts the access to specified websites uh, some also filter sites that use specific words other allow you to filter email messages chat rooms and programs many internet security companies um you know they include a firewall antivirus program uh not not the companies sorry the the uh, internet security programs include a wire uh, firewall antivirus program and filtering capabilities combined together browsers also often include content filtering capabilities this is the most important slide of uh, this week's content uh, in 2016 the national assembly of pakistan enacted the prevention of electronic crime act crimes act which is called pika uh, to provide a comprehensive legal framework to define various kinds of electronic crimes mechanism mechanisms for investigations prosecution and uh other related uh, issues to content to sorry electronic crimes iske jo section number 10 17 21 and 22 hain these are the cognizable crimes whereas others are non cognizable crimes yani uh, in jo 10 17 21 22 22 hai ye agar aap commit karte hain to aap pe saza jo hai na wo aap pe lagu hoti hai वेयर एज जो अदर शिके हैं इस सेक्शन इस एक्ट की उसमें वो नॉन कॉगनाइजेबल क्राइम्स हैं तो अगर आप स्पेसिफिकली मैं आपको बताऊँ कि सेक्शन ट्वेंटी वन में क्या है तो सेक्शन ट्वेंटी वन प्रोवाइड्स द दैट यूज ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मीन्स दैट मे रिजल्ट इन अ रेप्यूटेशनल डैमेज और ब्रीच ऑफ प्राइवेसी शेल बी पनिशेबल विद विद इम्प्रिजनमेंट ऑफ Uh, up to seven years and with which may extend to five million rupees or both. यानी सात साल की कैद हो सकती है और आपको पांच million rupees जो है ना जुर्माना हो सकता है. Under section twenty two, punishment of up to seven years or fine up to five million rupees or both has been prescribed for the offence of producing, distributing or transmitting. pornographic uh, pornographic material showing underage girls engaged in sexually explicit conduct so aapko uh, main suggest karungi sabko ke cyber crime fia ki ye web pe website page zarur visit kare to uh, read some of the sample cases of cyber crimes in pakistan this week's content presented a variety of digital security risks you learned about cyber crime uh, and cyber criminals we discussed risks safeguards uh, associated with internet and network attacks unauthorized access and use software theft information theft and hardware theft even uh, vandalism and failure it presented various backup strategies and methods of securing wireless communications you learned about ethical issues in society and various ways to protect the privacy of personal information
please watch the supporting videos to fully understand some of the concepts of this week's content see see you all uh, next week till then take care of yourselves